I'm going to bring that up. I'm not going to bring that up. I think it's going to be a slap. I have to bring it up. Six five dollars. Is this going to slap a slap? I think you can be told. That's right. All right, I'll do my best. <laughs> so all I can do. Good evening. We welcome all visitors and parishioners to Our Lady of the Valley Parish here at St. Anne's Church, offering special welcome to those who will be baptized or received into the Catholic Church this evening and their families. This evening we celebrate Easter Vigil. During this sacred night, we anticipate Jesus' resurrection with one of the most ancient rites, a solemn vigil. Leading into the celebration of Easter with a joy that overflows into the 50 days of celebration of the Easter season, our Mass this night will be different from the usual Sunday Mass. We begin in darkness and we await Christ our light. Please silence all cell phones at this time. We have a couple of announcements. The parish office will be closed on Monday due to the Easter holiday. Also, there will be no daily mass on Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday this week. The normal schedule will return on Thursday. Next Sunday is Divine Mercy Sunday. The Chaplet of Divine Mercy 
and his song will be prayed at 3 p.m. and Father Hopes will make a time to join us as we implore God's mercy for the whole world. Our liturgy begins with the blessing of the Easter fire outside. We invite those who are physically able to go to the main entrance of the church and proceed outside for this blessing. Please bring your candle taper with you. Also, please be careful with the candles so as not to burn the pews or drips wax on the pew or the carpet. My brothers and sisters, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with God in him. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray, and grant that by these paschal celebrations we may be so inflamed with whole heavenly desires that with minds made pure, we may attain festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Wouldn't be the first time. I'll get it.
Yep, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, got it. Let me down. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha, the Omega. All time belongs to him and all the ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. Amen. By his holy, and glorious wounds, May Christ the Lord guard us and protect us. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. Just stand by for a minute, and we'll come see you. Make sure you get that back. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let his holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the people. And also with you, Spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just with ardent love of mind and heart, and with devoted service of our voice, to acclaim our God invisible, 
the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which has slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy one. This is the night when sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. Oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. Oh, truly blessed night, worthy alone to know this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. But now we know the praises of this pillar which glowing fire ignites for God's honor, a fire into many flames divided, yet never dimmed by sharing of its light, for it is fed by melting wax, drawn out by mother bees, to build a torch so precious. Oh, oh truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divide to the human. Therefore, 
Listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God, in times past, saved His people, and in these, the last days, has sent us His Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated. I invite you also to extinguish your candles. Tell her we're done singing the exultat. Our first reading can be found on page 122 in the Breaking Bread Hymnal. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus, evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed, the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the third day. Then God said, 
Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night. And he made the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed, the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was and God blessed them saying, be fertile, multiply and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see, I give every, every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. To all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, he rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and, and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my Robed in light as with a cloud. 
Lord, send out your spirit and renew the faith of the earth. You have fixed the earth upon its foundation, not to be moved forever. With the ocean as a garment, you covered it. Above the mountains, the waters stood. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the faith of the earth. You send forth springs into the water courses that wind among the mountains. Beside them the birds of heaven dwell. From among the branches they send forth their song. Lord, send out your spirit and renew from your palace. The earth is replete with the fruit of your works. You raise grass for the cattle and vegetation for man's use, producing bread from the earth. Lord, send out but your Christ spirit and renew the face of the earth. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works. May those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that in the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The next reading is found on page 125. You may be seated. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, and you lift up your staff, and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two, that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God, who had been 
leading Israel's camps, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camps of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camp coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind, and throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic. He so clogged their chariot wheels that they would hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back into the normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land throughout the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore, and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant, horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord for he is glorious. Try. 
flood, waters covered them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered himself in glory. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O oh Lord, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Please stand. O oh God, who by the light of the New Testament have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times, so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people. Grant, we pray, that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith, may be reborn by partaking of your spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not. And nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way, and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please stand. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the teaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. The next reading is found on page 130. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands, According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they came among the nations, wherever they came, they served to profane my holy name, because it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, yet they had to leave their land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, 
Thus says the Lord God, Not for your sake do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name, which you profaned among the nations to which you came. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your body strong, stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statues, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. Like a deer that longs for running streams, my soul longs for you, my God. A first is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Like a deer that longs for running streams, my to the house of God. Amid loud cries of joy and thanksgiving, with a multitude keeping festival, like a deer that longs for running streams, my Oh. 
and remain standing. Let us pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mysteries of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation, which you plan from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is raised up, what had been made old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they all came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Our Gloria can be found on page 891 of the Breaking Bread Missal, 891. Glory to God in the highest among earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son. Let us pray. O oh God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> the epistle can be found on page 132. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, 
we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Our gospel acclamation can be found on page 382 in the Breaking Bread Missal. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord.
I whittled my homily down to an hour and a half, so. <laughs> Happy Easter. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. As we gather tonight to celebrate the Lord's resurrection, it is with great joy that we gather to baptize two adults who are present with us and to receive into the church through the sacraments of confirmation and Eucharist to other adults. It is a joy for me. My mother was baptized Lutheran. And when she married my father, she entered the Catholic Church. Back then, you met with the priest in the rectory. He prepared you, and then on the day of her wedding, she received confirmation, first Eucharist, and marriage. Three sacraments, all in one day. And she was the best Catholic that I have ever known. She truly was. Even when I strayed from the church, God gave her the wisdom to deal with me in such a way that it wouldn't drive me away farther from the church, but offer me an invitation by God to be his child. I'll never forget the day that I wandered back into the church after being away for a long time. I was afraid the roof of the church would collapse on everybody. I didn't know the responses because they had changed. I stood in the back of church. I didn't feel apart. Not because people weren't welcoming to me, but because I had separated myself from the church. That's why I so rejoice in the journey of those today who will be baptized and be received into the church through the sacraments of confirmation and Eucharist. I rejoice because all of us are unique God has a plan for us, and we just need to trust that plan. Everyone's journey is different. Everyone's journey has peaks and valleys. But through it all, the Lord is with us. The Lord walks with us and offers us the gift of life, now and for all eternity. I love the Easter Vigil because we do readings which tell us of our history, how God, throughout history, loved the world. Through creation, by delivering his people through the Red Sea, his chosen people, by giving us water to be refreshed and to be cleansed in the sacrament of baptism. And finally, and most magnificently, he sent his son. All of these things we read about today are truly magnificent. But the apex of God's magnificence, the source of his love and mercy, is found in his willingness to send his son. 
who would heal, who would teach, who would feed, who would sit with sinners. How he would be willing to suffer and to die, which we commemorated during this week. And now, to gloriously rise from the dead. In our gospel, the women are going to the tomb, and I love the humanity expressed in this gospel. They say to one another, well, who will roll back the stone for us? It wasn't like a little stone, okay? This is a boulder. It was huge. Who could even think about rolling it back? How did they figure they were going to anoint Jesus' body without someone, a lot of people, to remove that stone? So who removed the stone for us? Then they get there. And guess what? The stone is moved. They worried about who's going to move the stone. But God took care of that, didn't he? God took care of it. We worry about things. We all have boulders in our lives. And you know what? You can't move them. It is beyond your ability to move them. But I assure you, God can move them. And God loves you so much that he sent his only son. Do you think he loves you enough to remove that boulder? To help you to remove that boulder? Too often, those boulders are our sins. The temptations that the evil one lays before us. Jesus, by his blood, has washed away our sins. He's removed all the boulders. So we don't have to worry. We do need to come to him. We do need to come to him and plead for his mercy. And that's why the church gives us the sacraments, that we might plead for God's mercy through Jesus Christ, that we might have life. I assure you, anyone who has come to Jesus and asked him has not been wanting. He always responds, especially to sinners like me. And he will respond to you too. I hope you will celebrate this Easter and rejoice in the baptism that is ours in Christ Jesus. A promise of life now and eternal life something we cannot achieve on our own. We cannot do it. Only Jesus can, and he has. Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Brothers and sisters, with one heart and one soul, let us by our prayers 
come to the aid of Drew and Corey in their blessed hope so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. At this time, I would like to invite Drew and Corey to please come forward, along with your sponsors. I invite you please, Drew and Corey, to kneel. Sponsors stand behind them with your hand on their shoulder. Brothers and sisters, please stand as we pray. The Litany of the Saints can be found on page 134. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter. Pray for us, Saint Andrew. Pray for us, Saint John. Pray for us, Saint Mary Magdalene. Pray for us, Saint Stephen. Pray for us, Saint Ignatius of Antioch. Pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Savior, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. All holy men and women, pray for us. Lord, be merciful, Lord, Lord save your people. From all evil, Lord, Lord deliver us, we pray. pray. From every sin, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death, Lord, Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. By your death and resurrection, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us, us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we deliver us. Hear our prayer. 
Bring these chosen ones to the birth of the grace of baptism. Lord, Lord we, we ask, ask you, you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, Lord we, we ask you, you hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth by you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to ask God to bless this baptismal water. Let us pray. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism, O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O oh God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water it would come to an end to, vi to vice and a beginning of virtue. O oh God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the, bapti the baptized. O oh God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism, from all the squalor of life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through the water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ in baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I ask Drew and Corey, who are to be baptized, along with their godparents, to please respond to these questions. 
Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. I now invite you to the font for baptism. Drew, if you'd come forward first, along with your godparent. Drew, I baptize you. Oh, your head just broke a little bit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Stay there, don't move. If your head was like mine, it'd be a lot easier, you know. Okay. <laughs> Corey, if you'd come forward, God parent. Corey, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Place this on Corey, so it's like a shawl. Okay, you can put them on one of the shoulders. You can go and place it on on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Right over his shoulder. It's a like a shawl. Drew and Corey, you become a new creation and you have clothed yourselves in Christ. Receive this baptismal garment and bring it unstained to the judgment seat of our Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life. Amen. At this time I'm going to ask the godparents to take this candle and to light it from our Easter candle, okay? You can do it. You just jump, okay? No. <laughs> De- Deacon Mark is going to go get the, or um, um, would you go get the lighter, okay? The big one. Thank you.
beaten by Christ, walk always as a child of the light. And keep the flame of faith alive in your heart. When the Lord comes, may you go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Present them, please, with the candles. Thank you. And this time, I'd like to invite our newly baptized to uh, you all to have a, your candle, pick up your candle. I'm going to invite them to begin going around and sharing the light of Christ with you. Okay, so you'll relight your candles. Go to it. And just pass that light along, okay? I don't expect them to light everybody's individual candle. I remind you also to be careful with your candles that you don't burn the pew or that you don't drip all over the wax all over the pew or the floor. Okay, Drew and Corey, you come back now, please. We rejoice with both of you, and we pray. The God of power and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin and brought you to new life through water and the Holy Spirit. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation so that, united with his people, you may remain forever a member of Christ, who is priest, prophet, and king. Amen. And now, it's our turn. Drew and Corey, you may return to your seats along with your sponsors. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. 
And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask all of you, and please, I would like to hear your voice. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and the prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may our almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Now my favorite part. During the sprinkling of the people, please join in singing hymn number 650, Baptized in Water. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood oh, of Christ, Christ our King, heirs of salvation. Trusting his promise, faithfully now God's praise we sing. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, dead in the tomb with Christ our King. One with his rising, freed and forgiven. Thankfully now God's praise we sing. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, marked with a sign of Christ. Star King, born of one Father, we are His children. Joyfully now, God, praise you we sing. You. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Yeah, it's looking at that water. Did you go, did you go this side? The center too? Okay. You guys got wet? Okay, all right. At this time, I'd like to invite Donna and Robin to please come forward, along with your sponsors.
Oh, you, please, please extinguish your candles. That was for the baptism. And then just don't put them on the pew yet until they cool down a little bit. Thank you. Donna, Robin, of your own free will, you have asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You have made their decision after careful thought, a lot of preparation and learning under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to come, I now invite you, along with your sponsors, in the presence of the of, the, of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be completely one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sign of the Church's unity. And so I ask you, do you believe and profess all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God? Donna and Robin, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here so that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith that you have professed in the presence of your family. Congratulations. Now I'd like to invite Drew and Corey to please come forward once again with your sponsors. And you can leave your candle in the pew. Just don't sit on it. Okay. The water's gone. The water's gone. I don't any water. My dear candidates for confirmation, by your baptism, you were born again in Christ and became members of Christ's and his holy people. You, now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to be baptized, to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit, which you are to receive, will make you more like Christ and help you to be witnesses to his suffering, death, and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and in love. My dear friends, let us pray to God, our Father, that he will pour out his Holy Spirit upon these candidates for confirmation to strengthen them with his gifts and anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you have freed your sons and daughters from sin and given them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them now to be their helper and their guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, St. Paul. Amen. Peace be with you. St. Maria of the Incarnation, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Blessed. Andrew, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Would you please join me in congratulating our newest members? I'm sure as you long to do, you can now be seated, okay? <laughs> Congratulations to all of you, that's great. Please stand. <laughs> Join with all those who are now newly baptized in Christ throughout the world. And filled with joy on this great feast, let us offer our prayers to God, who fills the darkness of the world with the light of Christ. Let us pray. For the church and her leaders, that they may be instruments of Christ's light for all who live in darkness, of hope for all who know pain and suffering, and of love for all who experience rejection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Corey and Drew, and all the newly baptized, for Donna and Robin, and all those who have been received into the Catholic Church, that they will persevere faithfully in all that God asks of them, enrich the church community with their gifts, and manifest the reign of God in their words and deeds. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the entire human family, that we who have been created in the image and likeness of God may recognize and respect God's gift of life in one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who yearn for freedom, those who are enslaved, those held unjustly, those bound by addiction, and for those who live under oppressive governments, that God will lead them forth to freedom, wholeness, and safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of reconciliation and healing, for families that are divided, for churches and communities that are at odds, and for nations that are in conflict, especially in Haiti, Ukraine, Gaza, and Israel that the power of Christ's resurrection may bring forth new opportunities for healing and growth and a lasting peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially all those on our bulletin prayer list, and for their caregivers, 
that they may find strength and hope in the Lord, and remember that his mercy endures forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve our country in the military, those who have requested our prayers, for the silent intentions that we hold in our hearts, and all our faithfully departed, especially Sandy Conway, and for Peg McDermott and Angelina Noble Van Roosh, who are being remembered in a special way at today's liturgy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, who destroyed death and brought life and immort immortality to light. Hear the prayers that we offer in the hope of eternal glory, and grant that we who have received new life in baptism may live forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. As our altar is prepared and our gifts are brought forward, please join in singing number 577, The Strife is Over. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The strife is over, the battle done. Now is the victor's triumph won. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with these sacrificial offerings, that what has begun, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. By sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, 
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer a sign. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This evening, for the reception of Holy Communion, I'm going to invite our candidates and catechumens who are now our newly baptized and received into the church. We're no longer candidates and catechumens anymore, okay? Um, invite them to come forward first to receive Holy Communion along with their families. And then after they have received, then there will be three stations to receive Holy Communion. Um, Deacon Mark will be at this side aisle. Our pastor associate, Deborah Brinkus, will be at this side aisle and I will be here in the center aisle. And then you can come forward down the side or the center aisles and return by way of the same aisle when to receive Holy Communion. If there is anyone present unable to come forward for Holy Communion, we ask that you remain in your place, raise your hand, and one of us will come and administer Holy Communion to you in your place. Our communion hymn will be number 513, O Lord, I am not worthy.
please stand and let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. I invite you to please take a bulletin home with you and make it part of your weekend reading. Also, I thank you for coming to this celebration. It is the highlight of the church year, although in some churches you wouldn't know it, okay? But I am grateful for your presence here, and I'm grateful that you have come to celebrate uh, the Lord's resurrection from the dead and to support our candidates and catechumens who are now our newly baptized and received into the church. So thank you very much for your presence here. There, one celebration leads to another. At the conclusion of this celebration, there will be uh, some cake and a little celebration going on in the library, which is just through that uh, archway. Uh, where the light is on. Um, and you can meet our candidate, our uh, newly confirmed and baptized, um, and congratulate them. And you can have a piece of cake too, okay? Uh, please don't forget um, that we have boxes at the exits if you would like to leave a contribution, because we can always use them. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Our closing hymn is number 172, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Jesus Christ is risen today, alleluia. Our triumphant holy day, alleluia. Who did once a
praise and let us sing Alleluia unto Christ our heavenly King Alleluia who went to the cross and quit Alleluia see 